Okay, so it's the story of Job set in a dystopian future where revelation is happening and there's some sci-fi multiverse stuff thrown in. You ready? Are you sick? Who knew my voice would be this low? This summer, there was a seismic stir in the movie industry when Sound of Freedom showed up a bunch of big-name blockbuster franchises and took home $230 million worldwide on a $14 million budget. That movie was produced by Angel Studios. They try to crowdfund projects that Hollywood isn't super interested in making, generally appealing to a more Christian, kind of right-leaning audience. I'm part of that audience, and I favor small companies trying to shake things up when the big boys won't do it, so I already kind of like this company. You've perhaps heard of their previous service, VidAngel, which would filter scenes in TV and movies that you didn't want. I remember seeing an ad for them featuring Outlander, and I was wondering how much of that show would be left without the sex and violence. Anyway, they're also responsible for funding the Tuttle Twins show and Dry Bar Comedy, which is what made Shane Smith famous, and the company is worth his existence just for that face-tattooed wonder. They are also doing a biopic on Dietrich Bonhoeffer next year, and I'm very excited about that. They keep the marketing budget low by advertising via word of mouth, using handsome YouTubers to review their stuff, and also doing a pay-it-forward ticket purchase method, which I'll discuss later. I need you to pay it forward and hit that like button so the video spreads and more people can hear about this movie and this company. All of that brings us back to The Shift. And maybe you saw the trailer floating around this summer after Sound of Freedom went wild. As I said earlier, it's a retelling of the biblical story of Job, but the backdrop is a dystopian future when the latter parts of Revelation have happened and the beast is ruling the earth. The twist is a multiverse thing, where Satan, excellently played by Neil McDonough, has some kind of technology that can move people from one reality to another, explaining that each choice we make creates new possibilities, new realities. He is recruiting main character Kevin, played by Christopher Palaha, who is basically Job. The beginning of the movie shows Kevin meeting his wife, and he's very happy. Then we jump forward, and his marriage looks like it's in shambles. Then he meets the devil. Satan has recruited many, many versions of Kevin to be one of his shifters, people who sow chaos in the world for him. But this one is the first Kevin to turn him down. Satan tells Kevin he can have anything he wants, but Colton, what do we know about that? The devil is a liar. Correct, and he seems to defeat the devil by resisting him in prayer, but then finds that he is stuck in some alternate reality where faceless soldiers patrol the streets, everybody is poor and unhappy, typical dystopian future stuff. We jump five years ahead again, and Kevin is infamous as the reason Satan, the benefactor as he is known in this world, is gone. Kevin is trying to spread the Bible as best he can remember it through his friend Gabriel, played by Sean Astin Gamgee, who is representing Job's friends, telling him it must be his fault somehow, and maybe he should just give up. He's trying to get other people to fight back. He's trying to... John, how would you put it? He spends the movie trying to ignite that revolution and find a way to jump realities and find the original Molly, his wife, who he knew before she was shifted away. Okay, so there's a lot going on here, and that is honestly the biggest flaw in the film for me. We're trying to do three things. We're telling the story of Job, we're using Revelation as a backdrop, and we're doing a sci-fi multiverse quantum leap thing. In my opinion, the Job story is the part that works the best, and the other two parts just didn't really get enough time to fully develop. I would have liked to have seen more of this left-behind style world, or more issues with these shifters who have the shifting technology. They seem to represent maybe the spirit of the Antichrist, and that would have been neat to get into. The revelation bits are, at most, a backdrop. One more thing that hurt my enjoyment of this, and I want to warn you so as to help you enjoy it, is that I spent too much time trying to draw parallels to Job and Revelation. I was distracted by trying to figure out what things represented, and sometimes they just don't. They're just part of the sci-fi world. The other thing that bothered me was feeling a bit lost in the first half. There's a lot going on, lots of ground to cover, and much of it gets explained and filled in later. The thing is, the movie doesn't communicate that you are supposed to be a bit confused. Like, when you're watching Memento, you don't know what's going on, but the movie has somehow signaled to you that you aren't supposed to. The shift doesn't adequately signal that, so I spent too much time feeling like I had just missed something. So if you go check this one out, don't worry about the beginning. You'll enjoy it more. It does get wrapped up in the second half. I would also be very interested to hear from someone who has no biblical knowledge whether they followed things or not. I can't remove that knowledge, so I'm not sure how much of the movie will make sense if you are not familiar with those two particular books of the Bible. I think going for Job was very ambitious, and I'm happy they chose to tell this story. Personally, I find this to be a very challenging but important book, and I think they got the themes across very well. Angel deserves a lot of praise for not doing another Jesus loves you, everything's rainbows, Sunday school story. Another big plus for this movie is in terms of biblical storytelling, 
selling, we are seeing a huge level up in production value. I've poked fun at Fireproof and Courageous in the past for having a great message, but they weren't excellent as movies. The sets and effects in this one were very good, and they have some quality actors giving great performances. Palaha does a great rebel guy searching for his way back to his old life, gives a really good rendition of Job, who has lost his money, wife, children, and health, but does not betray God. Sam, <clears throat> sorry, Sean Astin puts in a good performance, but the real star of the show is McDonough, who is just such a fabulous bad guy. He brings a real scary presence as the devil, channeling Al Pacino, giving that calm yet frightening aura in all of his scenes. Honestly, the least interesting parts of the movie happen when he isn't around to add weight. He has an excellent speech in the middle about selfishness being the real definition of evil, and throughout the movie he tries to tempt Kevin in various ways, usually not the same way twice. It sounds weird, <laughs> but, but the writing and acting for Satan were the best parts of this movie. So as I said, the first half was, is alright, it wasn't particularly wowing me, but the second half is where it really starts to come together. More story, more action, and a very satisfying and well done ending. By the time the credits rolled, I was back on this movie's side. I recommend you check this one out. Not only will you enjoy this movie, but you'll be supporting a great independent studio as well. There's a link below where you can claim a free ticket for yourself or buy some for folks who can't. Have you seen this one? What do you think? I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you next time.